What's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day, and I'm going to answer some prayers today. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, to the millions and millions of fans and watchers, I'm bringing you, since Cold Steel came out with the Old West buoy, I'm bringing you the most requested video I've gotten so far. What is better? The case or the cold steel. Now, right away, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there is a slight size advantage. Yeah. So, I mean, if I was pitting the the case against the uh, hen and rooster, you could see that they're almost identical. Almost identical. Even the steels. The steels are pretty much the same. These two are as close to perfectly matched as you can get. But we aren't talking about this gorgeous hen and rooster, which is awesome. We are talking about, right here, the Case XX Presentation Buoy and the Cold Steel Wild West Buoy. So, we are going to get into these real quick. Um, let me grab the sheaths real quick. Hold on a second. Hot damn was I prepared. All right, so we have the sheaths right here, and you can see... Both are leather. The cold steel has a dangler where the case has a uh, set loop. Now the case does have a uh, like a more artistic style to it. It has the cool shape to it and it's brown where the cold steel is just plain black leather sheath. Um, they both do it right by having the cross strap on the spine side rather than the blade sp uh, side. So much better doing it that way. Um, ah, they're both really good leather. If I had to say that one was better than the other, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, I, I would probably have to say the case gets it. I'm not a big fan of Danglers so much, um, but just the fact that they put in all the extra, you know, a little doodad and tool work and all that, um, and gave it some nice contouring where this one is just literally plain with and the only logo on this entire knife is going to be right here it's going to be on the sheath not the blade itself um saying cold steel i would have to say that the sheath goes to uh goes to the case it's really well made now here's another thing is both of these companies are u.s companies both have been around tried and true for a long time. The case been around a little bit longer. So let's get into the um, the style and shape. They are both stylized after the uh, mid 1800s Western Bowie knife, and um, it was the it's known as the W49 style because Western when they did their knife it was the W49, the Western Model 49, and it looked a whole lot like this. Um, and it's just a true tried, collected, and worthy, worthy blade shape. When this style was made, this is considered the V44 style. It was used more in um, World War II. Uh, it was carried by troops and uh, used as their fighting knife and their trenching knife. Um, this would have been a fighting knife for frontiersmen and cowboys alike you know guys that were traveling from east coast to west coast during that uh during that gold rush going after that boom they needed a large fighting knife that they could use for everything and that's exactly where this came from the big brass s guard was to collect an opponent's blade or to stop an animal's paw from taking off your fingers while you while you fought for your life um, or a tomahawk from, you know, some, you know, you're going across some land that you're not supposed to be in some sacred native American land or some bunch of people that are pissed off that you're there, um, with, and they had the right to be pissed off. Um, you know what I mean? You needed to be able to stop that tomahawk from hitting you or stop that bone blade that they're using. This, this big guard right there saved a whole lot of hands. I'll tell you that. Um, it's just awesome. Now they make them brass and there's a reason that they make brass. A lot of times you'll see on like the, um, some of the, uh, 
other the primitive buoys, you'll see this big brass guard going down the spine. And what that does is when a blade hits it, that soft brass not only took away vibration, but it protected the hard steel from from shattering because a harder steel is going to be more brittle than a softer metal, obviously. So the same thing with this is when it hits and you hit onto that, uh, it takes away vibration. Even when you strike, if your hand is pressed against the soft metal, it's going to take away some of that vibration. And that's why you see brass guards on any one of these knives who um, who does it right. Any, any of them that are true to what they are. So now we know the difference between the W49 and the V44. Um, one was made original, you know, one was made for traveling the West and, and fighting off, you know, anything and everything that comes at it. And one was um, scaled down and made for war use. Not scaled down in size so much because the original W49, I believe, was closer to this size and this size, the original. Um, so it wasn't scaled down in size. It was scaled down as far as your guard and your handle shape. You see how it has this big, big, giant rest here? Where this one, this one, they had to have a nice uh, accented finger rest. And, a, and the reason that this one has it like that is because you needed a blade that wasn't going to leave your hand. When you're fighting, you need something that is going to be secure, like a mother sitting in your hand. It's not going anywhere. So what they did is they went from a square-shaped handle, right, or, or um, less contoured, um, to a really round handle, which generally a round handle, you're not going to want for fighting because it's going to shift in the hand. This is where the genius comes in here. Not only does this guard, which is smaller and more capable of moving around in tight places, um, not only does it keep you protected from another blade hitting you, but it locks in to these points of your hands where it keeps it from turning. And this piece right here holds that hand in there. So you get the nicest, nicest grip right there. It's so tight and it just isn't going anywhere. Even if you hold it in the reverse grip, this piece right here isn't going to turn because of how it's locked in on your hand. So it was a, a genius move to make it lighter and stable in the hand uh, for fighting applications. Um, now let's get into these two in particular and screw the history. All right, so I want the exact measurements, so I have it pulled up. We're going to start with the case, which is, this was, I mean, my favorite all-time buoy knife. I freaking love it. So the case, um, the steel is, it's, it's patented. It's called True Sharp Steel. This stuff, I've said it in every video, that True Sharp is truly sharp. This is insane. I did a video with this one not too long ago, one year after using it, and I used it every single weekend for a solid year, every single weekend, um, to see how it would hold up. I have not sharpened this blade, not once. I have not brushed by it, done anything to it. The only thing I did is kind of lube it up a little bit, and that's it. That's all I did. I don't generally need to, need to keep oil on this because it's pretty corrosive free, but I did give it a little bit of something, something. But every freaking weekend for a year, this blade got to use. And you can see that this edge is in, in freaking impeccable. It's impeccable. Um, just awesome. Um, so it, it, it characteristically, it, uh, it's a lot like um, 1095 the, the way this blade handles um, you got that German um, German uh, what 4116 I think it's called the uh, that German stainless um, and German stainless is the priority of pro properties is that what you call it property um, it is a, a lot like 1095 the way it handles so that's kind of in your head of kind of what you're getting. Now it is a full tank construction. Obviously, uh, you can see where the last pin is. And I've never taken one of these apart, so I don't know if they have any steel in, down here. I don't know if it curls around. I don't think so. I think it just stops in here. I think that's what it does. But either way, 
I've never had an issue. I use this for a year every weekend straight. So uh, let's get into this. Um, you got your taper grind, da 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 da. Um, obviously, it's got a, a swedged clip point. Um, it is 14 and a quarter inches overall. The blade is nine and a half inches and it is 20 ounces. Um, thickness, I'm not too sure. Uh, let's see. It's there. This one, this one's thicker, but obviously it's a lot bigger. Um, I would, I, if I was going to guess, I would say four millimeters somewhere in there. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure in the thickness, but it's somewhere in there. It's somewhere in there. It's just right. So let's get into the, uh, let's get into this wild west buoy. So this one, the weight is just a little bit heavier, obviously. It's uh, 23.1 ounces. Um, this one's four and three quarter millimeter. I do believe that one is four millimeter. Um, the blade length on this guy is 10 and three quarter and the overall is 16 flat. The steel is 1090 high carbon and it again it does have a swedged clip point um how is this edge it is sharp it came sharp it came working um what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, show you guys some clips of each of these buoys in use ba -ba 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 -ba, and then we're going to go out and we're going to swat at something something tall we're going to knock one down so um that's what we're going to do uh, first let me just go over feel Overall, both feel great in the hand, but in, in different ways. This one, a cold steel, is much more squared. So you're getting a lot of lock inside the bends. So right here is a lock. Right here is a lock. And right here, it has a lock. It, it really feels good. But it doesn't feel as secure in the hand as this one. If I had to say sheath for sheath, I have to say case. If I have to say handle shape for handle shape or handle fit, I should say, I'm going to say the case. But if I have to say handle material, I would pick this rosewood, and I believe that's what it is. I believe it's rosewood over a synthetic any day. Um, it, how it's held on, this is held on with screws. This is held on with pins. I don't have a preference in that manner. Um, I like them both. Um, I pin my knives when I make mine. That's what I use. Um, but this thing is, is just great. Uh, lanyard hole on this one. No lanyard hole on this one. I don't use them anyway, so that doesn't bother me. Um, girth, obviously. I mean, you can see where right here at the base where the tang meets the blade, you can see the girth. Um, it's, it's just pretty, pretty freaking massive now i think the tangs are about equal in width i believe the tangs are pretty similar um this one is obviously true full tang construction which i do prefer i prefer true full tang it's just my favorite because i know it's there i, I can see the tang i know how thick it is i know how right it is um and obviously now that i'm looking at it this tang is, is thicker than this tang. Um, this one is probably an inch. This one is probably an inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Um, but they, again, they both did a job. Um, if I was going to talk about edge, um, I would have to give the edge to the case. I mean, the edge on this thing was flawless out of the box. Shave sharp, this thing was so shave sharp that it started knocking hairs off when it got about three inches away. They got scared of the edge. That's how sharp this thing was. Um, Handguard, I'm gonna give it to this one. Aesthetically pleasing. Um, the case, the way this tapers from belly to tang, it is just gorgeous. This one you see has more of a straight line from belly to tang. Meow, maybe you can see when it gets unblurry right there where this one, the taper is just beautiful. This one has a much better looking guard. Um, this one has a much better looking handle. This one just has a, uh, this one has a better looking and better feeling handle. This one just has a better handle. If you all understand what that means. Um, obviously we just talked about thickness. Um, this one is thicker. Uh, as far as chopping, 
because this one is so much longer, it should be a better chopper. However, I know when I chopped with this one um, in my, uh, before I even had this one in my extra large buoys um, video, this thing was an insane, and I mean in freaking insane chopper. It is just deadly. Uh, retail. This one retails for, I think, around 128 this one retails for, I think, around 209 or something like that. Let's see. Let's get it exact. Yeah, so this one, 128 retail. And remember, just because it's retail doesn't mean that's how much it costs. Um, and this one is 209 Man, I'm good. Um, so I think I found this probably for like a buck 20 somewhere in there um, when I when I bought it. And this one, I believe I was able to pick it up for around 70 75 somewhere in there. Um, so this one is going to cost you less to own. Um, but I mean, this one, uh, being case, if you were going to buy one and stick it on a wall somewhere and just hang it forever, this one can actually increase in value. There is a code on the stamp. The amount of stars and the way the logo is would tell you what years there's a whole code you can look up on the internet. To, to find out what years or how old around your knife is for case just by the stamp. They change the stamp within every certain amount of years so you can get an idea. So obviously, if you looked up your stamp and found out that you have a 20-year-old, 30-year-old um, buoy, then the value may have changed in your buoy. These are the world's most collectible knives. I don't mean this particular knife, I mean case in general. All case knives are extremely collectible and they are the world's most collectible knives and most collected knives. Um, just what they do. They just make knives that people want to own forever. And um, these knives hold value like crazy. That's the good thing about a case. Just because of that doesn't mean I don't use mine because I use the crap out of mine. All right. So speaking of use the crap out of, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over a couple of... Um, couple of screen things that I already did, a couple of video shots that I already did. We're going to take it outside right after that. So hold on. All right, guys. So I got you set up in a in a tree. And I, I've explained this before, but I'll show you again. What I did is there's a tree that's standing up that's that's cut. And I took my, uh, I know I have it on me, my hen and rooster. And what I did is here's the tree. It's in the ground. And I took this and I just pushed it. Woo! And this isn't in the ground, that's really hard to work. But uh, let's pretend it's in the ground. And I took this and I pushed it like this until I was able, whoa, too hard. So um, I'm gonna end up cutting my hand off just for you guys. So what I did is I pushed it and like this, so it's in the ground and I split the tree. And what I do is I take my phone, boop, and I put it there and then whoosh, you pull the blade out and now I can shake this thing, <laughs> earthquake, um, and my phone isn't going anywhere. It's it's um, it's right in there, hen and rooster. Um, so if you are filming and you're in the woods and you don't have a bipod with you or anything like that, take a really skinny tree like you're sitting on, um, like I just showed you, except that's still in the ground. Come down on it, pop, 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 until it opens up, put your phone in there, and voila. So, this is what I'm gonna do. First, I wanna show you how they wear, and hopefully, you know, there's a tree in the middle, so I can't really see, but you could possibly see how far it comes down. Here's the case, here's the, um, the cold steel. I would need, let's go like this, so you guys can really see. You can see how far, the, um, the, the, the cold steel hangs down really, really far. Um, I'm just about 6'3", and this thing goes on almost to my knee, right? So when it's on the belt, you have to remember um, how is it going to wear as far as concealment if you live in an area where you're allowed to carry a big knife, but they don't really want to see some giant knife hanging all the way down your leg. It just raises a lot of questions. So as far as um, the wear, you know, and, and how it sits on you, the case definitely sits higher and it's easier to throw a, a short jacket over it and you'll be all right um it's the same as the the hen and rooster 
but the case, I don't know if you saw it, let me go back. But here's the hen and rooster. Here's the case. The hen and rooster goes almost as far as the um, as the cold steel, but not so much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out one of these guys, and we're gonna take out one of these guys. So we have the case and we have the cold steel. Take a few swats with each, and then we'll switch hands. So you can see because I am left-handed, so I'm gonna make sure it's fair. All right, so. Uh, we're gonna start with one of these guys right here. This one's this one's in frame, yeah. So what I want to do is just see which one is going to inflict more damage. I have to say that bite for bite, um, this one, because of the size, obviously, it's just gonna swing more. I mean, it's just, the bite is incredible. Comfort for comfort, this one is definitely more comfortable to swing, where I can feel the edge here on my pinky. This one is so snug, I don't feel it. We'll switch hands, see if I feel the same thing. All right, we'll use the same tree. I don't know, that case is biting in really, really well. The, it's really hard to, to figure out which one is biting better. All right. So, I mean, that's pretty difficult. One thing I can tell you is that this brass guard never loosens. This one, you can hear it. It does It does loosen a little bit, and that's common. It's very, very common with these. Not cold steel, but common with this style. The, uh, the, the way this is held on is, this is pushed up there, and it's held on with this. It's not glued or welded. This one, I think, can't really see it. I don't know if it's glued. It's kind of hard to tell. But um, the, the way that this fits up there, because you're sliding it on, completely different fit, you know? Um, so you will get loosening right here, and it gives it that sound, that twang sound when you hit it. Does nothing. It does nothing to the knife. It doesn't devalue it. It doesn't change the swing. It doesn't do anything. It just creates a little noise going thang, thang, thang. But um, it's really something that you can overlook. When I, um, when I had the Cisco buoy, this style, the W49 style, and I changed it into a V44 style pretty much. Um, what I did is, I, after I took off the handle, I used JB Weld after I reformed the guard, slid the guard back up there, but JB welded it, which is, if you guys know, it's just basically a, a, an amazingly strong um, adhesive, and now my guard goes nowhere. So if I want, I can just unscrew these, add a little JB Weld right there, screw this back on, and the rattle will not happen. It's done, it's gone, it's over. Um, and that's that's one thing. But like on all of these, you will find that you will get a rattle in there because it's not really being pushed as much as something like this is, right? So this one, it's just gonna hold a lot as far as fit and finish. Fit and finish is, is probably the words I'm looking for. The case will own it. So as far as chopping though, um, it was really, really difficult to, especially on that second set, just figure out which one is getting more bite at, at, with each swing. Um, this guy just goes through things like, I mean, like crazy. It just goes through. And this guy is just such a massive beast that there's almost nothing you can do to slow it down. So what I want to do, since I'm out here, I want to show you guys because I haven't done a versus between these two and these are really really close to each other I want to swing the hen and rooster buoy against the case just for kind of a little bonus material here and uh, we'll just see we'll just see what happens as a matter of fact hold on let's 
instead of taking down a new one, I'm just going to take one that I already took down and put a couple swings into it. First, the hen and rooster. Now, the case. And I want to see bite for bite. Man. Man, these guys are serious blades. So, let's see if you can see it right here. That's the slice from the hen and rooster. That's the slice from the case. They just, it goes in so deep. So, so deep. All right, let's try that again. First, I'll go with the case. Man, that is serious cutting power. And now, I'll go with the hen and rooster. I'm actually gonna hold this. Holy mackerel. Let's see if I can keep them close together. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. This knife right here is the closest I found to this knife. So one of these times I'm gonna have to do a versus on the uh, working this hen and rooster against this case because that would be the, probably the closest battle, shape for shape, everything, size for size, that I found so far to the case is this hen and rooster. And uh, hen and rooster, you know, people, people go on forums and they talk smash about different things. And a lot of it's they don't really know what they're talking about. It's just, oh, I heard through the rumor mill, so this has got to be fact. And I'm gonna they're one of the most underrated knife companies on the planet. Uh, they started out a long time ago uh, in Germany. And then the company was bought out, and now they make a bunch in Spain. And they say, oh, well, uh, oh, the, the, uh, it decreased all, all the bull snap. I'll give you a full rundown when I do that video. Um, you can actually go and look at the videos on my Hen and Roosters. I have them all up there. But... Right now, it's between these two. And uh, that right there is awesome. This pair right here is just awesome. So let's see. Oh, I missed. Just awesome. So let me, uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Take this guy right here. It's not long enough to be a baton, but it'll work. I know I have batons out here that I've already cut down. I don't know where they all are. I probably already cut them up. So you can see, well, probably from this distance you can't, but this is splitting all the way down to here right now, all right? So just by a few shots with the case, I can get this tree to split. Now we'll go, we went this way with the case, so I'll go this way with the cold steel, and we're gonna get the same effect, I can guarantee it. These blades are just awesome. And you can see it's cruising and it's split down to here. So by just a few shots, literally, they they just, they work. They work, these guys are freaking phenomenal. Um, they're both fighting knives. They're both made to defend you against any kind of attack out there. Bigfoot comes at you and wah, wah, wah. I don't care. I'm keeping my Jack's beef links. Um, this thing and this thing is awesome. I put one in each hand and forget about it. You're done. So uh, let's, go, let's go one more thing. Let's go. <laughs> how do you like them apples did you guys even see that i hope i hope it was in the uh i hope it was in the frame i hope it was in the shot look at these look at these two these two went perfectly together so uh three throws in a row three hits these guys are easy to throw i mean these guys are easy you heard the the vibrating there um i think i definitely might might glue it because the more I use it the more that'll well it's not gonna loosen any more beyond that that's pretty much it but um if I unscrew these put some JB weld down there that'll never happen again what I'll do is I'll do it eventually and I'll show you guys but um man look at that that is perfect so here comes the question if I could have only one and I mean I'm lucky enough 
to be able to not just have both let me readjust here not just have both but to have three of these guys made by three different companies that just know how to make them you know what i mean know how to do them right um very very lucky person to be able to have this collection and um i have to say if it came down to just one and they said i'd be all day i'm sorry but uh democrats took over now every household is only allowed one um big buoy I, I would definitely have to keep my case um this thing there's a reason it was my favorite all all my life you know what i mean it's just an absolute workhorse this blade is phenomenal and and here's what sucks about that is by saying this knife is phenomenal that doesn't mean that this knife is less phenomenal no definitely not and it definitely doesn't mean that this knife is less phenomenal oh definitely not this thing is ridiculous i mean just freaking awesome now normally what i would do is i would cut down the s guard a little bit i'd take it off there and i'd, I'd give it a little better um, s guard shape but this is modeled after that classic western western blade i guess it didn't stick that in the tree far enough um so literally this is staying just like this the only thing i'm going to do is secure this with some jb weld and that's it and who knows maybe the reason they don't do it from the factory is so you can use different options on the handguard if you don't like those big ass guards um me personally i don't have a problem I, I love that classic style you know a lot of people hate the look of the giant brass s guard but this knife right here especially this knife right here it kind of needs it you know what i mean this is it just it is what it is so that's it guys i have uh i have these two buoys really these these three buoys but we're talking about these two and if it if it had to be one if it had to be one i can't walk away from the case i just can't do it so that's the uh that's that's the best i can bring you guys man i mean i i can't show you any more of the capabilities of these knives without slicing up an astronaut and apparently that's illegal so we're not going to do any of that um all i can tell you is that both of these blades are amazing this one just the way it feels in the hand when you swing the operation the ease of use because it's a little bit shorter it makes tighter work easier um it's easier to get around the the guard for tight work um everything about this thing is great could they have used a better handle material without a doubt without a doubt but have i had a problem with this handle material <laughs> absolutely not this thing is solid it has been solid for me this thing is over a year in use and i still use it. i did it every weekend for a year just to make a video on it to show you how it holds up i have still not touched the edge um and you've seen how easily i mean easily this thing went through the wood just awesome um and so did the other one the cold steel it's a brand it's a brand new edge kind of i've only used it maybe two or three times but it's still a fairly new edge um where this one is is definitely gotten its use um so i will continue to use this and and just like i said before when i go out in the woods um on a lot of my uh on a lot of my overnights um i can see myself let me give you a good shot of my shoulder i could see myself still just bringing this guy because it's an absolute beater beater of a quality knife usually when you're talking about a beater you're getting one of those you know one of those you're getting a cisco that's what you're using um this thing is absolutely not <laughs> a cheap knife this thing is amazing but i would use this in the woods to do the tasks that nobody else would do with a high quality knife because most people collect high quality knives and they want to keep them pretty and blah 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 so they can show their friends screw that this guy right here is getting used 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 let's see if i can't get them all here we go guys here we go so yeah if it came down to it for me personally that case that case is, is pretty much unbeatable in a western style buoy it's just unbeatable unbeatable it's very very close to this one but uh i mean it it's just it's hard to it's hard to say it and make it sound like i'm taking away from this because i am not the 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 decision between which one is literally 
whoosh, splitting hairs, splitting freaking hairs. Um, that said, I am Donnie B all day. Wow. Hope you guys like this one because you've been waiting for it. And until next knife.